Well, here you are. This is so exciting. Because here on the dairies, we have an innovative process to manage the manure. This process harvests the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, reduces odor, and creates a more nutritious fertilizer for the soil. On top of all that, it harnesses the energy of the manure to produce electricity and heat. When you use manure to produce electricity, it's green energy. Like solar power and windmills, it's renewable, so it helps the environment too. The process is called anaerobic digestion. Digestion is just like what happens when you eat something. And anaerobic means without air. So anaerobic digesters are like big stomachs. Now I know you're wondering, how does it work? Well, manure is vacuumed out of the barns where the cows live and is delivered to the manure treatment system where it is run through a sand manure separator. Recycled water is used to dilute the manure and remove most of the sand. This diluted manure is pumped into four half million gallon digester tanks. Inside these tanks, natural bacteria use it as a source of food. As the bacteria digest it, they produce methane gas, which bubbles to the top of the enclosed tank. Hang on, because the gas that is collected is clean and then is used to power generators that produce electricity. A 3,000 cow dairy can produce enough electricity to power over 750 homes. Double what it takes to run the dairy. It's the ultimate in recycling and produces cow power too. After the manure has been completely digested, the solids are separated and become a nutrient-packed soil. This soil is stored until spring, when it is applied to the fields just before the crops are planted. The liquid portion that is left over is used for irrigation and provides other crops with moisture and the balance of nutrients they require. All these crops use the nutrients to grow. You know, they take moisture and nutrients up through the roots and use sunlight to produce energy to grow. It's called photosynthesis. Here at the dairies of Fair Oaks, our harvested crops go right back to the cows for feed and start the cycle all over again. So, now what do you think about the subject of manure? I'll bet you hadn't really thought about it much before, but now you know, it's electrifying! It sure is. So, today's tour, uh, have you been over to the birthday barn yet? Oh, I think, well, if you haven't been to the birthday barn, we'll tell you about it when we get back on the trip from the tour. If you have time, you want to go over and see that. That is really something to see. Really nice over there. It's like a theater, almost. You can see that. Uh, on this tour, I'm going to take you to a place on the farm they call an anaerobic digester. Anaerobic digester. What that means in farm terms is processed cow manure. And you're going to see how we do that. We pick it up with a vacuum cleaner in all the barns and all the aisles. Take it to this uh, plant, process it. We get some byproducts from it, and I want you to listen to the tape real close to tell you what we do with some of the byproducts of that common. It's very interesting. So be a tape that's going to play the whole time and tell you everything is on each side. What you see on your right is where the vacuumed waste is delivered and the sand is separated. The processing building, which is farther back, is where the solids and liquids are separated. In the digester, the bacteria are devouring the manure and producing a biogas. That biogas contains 70% methane gas. Since this is a closed system, none of this gas can escape into the air. It is all collected, and the methane gas is used to run generators that produce electrical power for this dairy, the visitor center, and the cheese plant. Imagine, we are creating a renewable energy from simple cow manure and helping the environment at the same time. An added benefit is that the odors on the dairies are reduced by more than 90%. The manure solids that are left over, that brown material you see, has been converted into a topsoil through the same process that produces the biogas. These very fertile, odorless, and humus rich solids are stored on a 250 by 250 right foot concrete pad, where they'll be kept until we're ready to plant crops in the spring. Then the solids are spread in the soil, where they will preserve and keep our land rich for generations to come. which means their female become milking cows. 
Shortly after they're eating more than eight pounds of grain ration, the heifers will be moved to a heifer raising farm until they are ready to rejoin the herd as milking cows. Because the calves are grown with other calves from our dairy, we maintain biosecurity. The cows stay in the same herd, even when they go somewhere else to grow to production maturity. Every time the calves are picked up and moved, the hunters are stood up on end and pressure washed and sanitized. The old sand is taken out and spread back into the field, and the new sand is put in so the hunters are ready for new calves. The very same heifer calves that left the dairies come home when they are almost two years old and about 70 days from having their first calf. This process of returning heifers to the same dairy allows us to maintain and improve the herd. This means it helps protect the cow's udder from infections. This area of northwest Indiana has an almost endless supply of sand. Another very important reason for betting on sand is cow comfort. Sand helps support the cow's weight without creating pressure points that cause sore elbows and knees. It makes it easier for a cow to get in and out of her bed, and it forms around her to spread out her weight. The sand is brought over from our farm's sand pit and loaded into what is called a sand shooter. The sand shooter carries sand into the barn, and a high-speed conveyor directs the sand right into the beds. Here in Indiana, the summer heat and humidity is terrific for growing corn, but can be a little warm if you don't have air conditioning in your home or car. Cows can tolerate a greater range of temperature than humans can. In fact, they are comfortable between 10 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But once you get to 70 degrees and warmer, the cow starts to get uncomfortable. Cows don't sweat very much, so cows have to get rid of their extra body heat by evaporation, radiation from their skin, or increased respiration. We can help the cows stay cool and comfortable by trenching them with water to get rid of the heat. The white plastic pipes that run along the